Hey everyone, Elisa with Jots Designs, and I'm going to be making a clock here, and I'm using some pigments I just got in from Laura with uh, Laura's Art Corner, and I ordered a couple of Lorez Expressions pastes, and Laura was also doing a de-stash, so I hopped on the opportunity to get some more pigments. Um, I picked a couple for the clock here, but if you haven't seen my unboxing video on my channel yet, definitely check that out and let me know what color combinations you'd like to see. Uh, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you are not already uh, subscribed to my channel. And hang on for a second and I'll show you how I made the clock. Okay, I've got my wood round here. It's uh, 12 inches and it's actually two pieces that we glued together and um, sandwiched them together just to make it a little bit thicker because the single piece by itself wouldn't really hold up to resin, I don't think. Um, and then we made sure that the edges were all smooth and neat. I sanded it down with some 220 um, and then I used some sanding papers and a sanding block to get the edges rounded and nice and smooth. And then I also have a battery powered uh, rotary tool that I used just to clean up the center. And now I am going to be using some polycrylic uh, just to seal the wood and I'm going to use the clear mat and um, this helps so that way there's no bubbles rising in the resin from the wood. So I'm just going to get started with that. So I'm going to do the rest of this in a voiceover because I really didn't talk, um, but I definitely wanted to make this more of a tutorial. So I switched out the plastic tub that I had under here just because it was too big, put some um, spray, paint, spray paint caps on there, and then I gave each side a good coat of the polycrylic, and in between coats I just dried it with a hair dryer um, just to make things a little bit quicker. And uh, flipped it over, did the other side. I don't know if you have noticed my dogs in the background walking around. They always have to know what their mom is doing. Um, I always make sure to always kind of rub my fingers around the the edge underneath to make sure any drips that might have gotten down there um, don't make any extra ridges that I don't want. And then I'm going to give the side that I'm pouring on an extra coat just to make sure um, that it's good and sealed and um, that there won't be any bubbles coming up from the wood in the resin. Um, so I grabbed some sandpaper that I got at the dollar store, uh, just 150 grit, given each side a nice little sand just to smooth it down, wiped it off with the uh, blue paper towel, and um, and then I'm just going to use the little battery powered rotary tool to clean up the middle. I've got the Bare Premium Plus Paint and Primer in one. It's the interior flat, and uh, I just had them make it black. I always want to make sure you give it a good stir. And I'm just going to give it a nice coat of paint here um, and then also dry it with the hair dryer. And I'm going to be doing the back side um, after the pour. That way I don't have to clean anything up um, from when I'm cleaning up the, the resin drips or anything like that. Save some time. Give it a good second coat. And um, I do try to make sure I get the, the middle, but it's really not too important because um, the clock movements, movement is going to be in there. So wasn't too worried about making sure it was perfect or anything. Um, just quickly dried it with the hair dryer, sanded it a little bit more, and made sure everything was level. And then just grabbing all the supplies I'm going to use. And um, I'm going to start with the Lorez Black and the bubble gum that I just got. So I'm excited to use that pink. I haven't, of course, used it yet. Um, and then I'm going to use System 3 White as the white. And then these four pay, or powders, sorry, um, I got from Laura and Laura's Art Corner. They were just powders she had from a long time ago, um, and she was just doing her de-stash. So I don't know the names of them. Um, so I don't, sorry, I don't have links for them. But everything, um, including that Pro Marine epoxy um, and the Lorez products, those links are down below. So check it out. I'm just going to make up about uh, six ounces of resin. Do it so one-to-one. -one and um, separate that out get all the colors mixed in and how i like to actually mix in my powders is um, i like to put the resin in first and then put the powder in because then i'm more able to um, determine how much i need how much uh, 
I want it to be transparent and everything like that. So then I'll just actually fold it in gently before I start stirring it. And that way I don't have any puffs of powder coming out or anything like that. Check out the different colors in that one. That's awesome. So I'm just going to fold them in and uh, then start stirring and get the rest of these mixed up here. And then I'm going to start with um, a base of black. And this is actually a hair dyeing silicone brush um, that I just got. It's the first time I used it. I really love it. It's pretty awesome. Um, and then I'm just going to start doing the colors um, one on top of each other, really. Uh, I've noticed that with the silicone oil, if you have layers like that, you get a lot more depth because, of course, it's going through the layers um, of color. So I'm just going to do basically three bands here. And then with the white, um, I, I decided I wanted to try using the silicone in the white. So I poured a little bit in an extra cup. Um, so that way, in case I didn't want, <laughs> I didn't want that effect anymore, I still had some unsiliconed white. And I put five drops in there and mixed it up really well because I wanted it evenly distributed throughout the white. And then I just ran it over some of the colors, some um, in between the colors. And I definitely really liked what it was doing. So I mixed up some more. Um, this one ended up with six drops. And um, I put it on the edges. So that way I didn't have um, such harsh, harsh edges with the colors there. And I wanted that effect on the edges with the white. So you can see the effect that it has definitely spreads out, gives it some awesome cells. I just made sure all the edges were covered in resin so that way um, it was just smooth all the way around. And then I just took the rest of my resin and kind of made a dirty pour in a cup here um, and then used one of my square silicone molds and the remaining in a, a unicorn mold um, just to make sure everything was used. So now it's um, next day and everything's cured. And I'm just gonna take some more of this blue shop towel here and wipe the silicone off. And I've found that these shop towels and and the uh, cloth-like paper towels uh, actually really grab that silicone and take it off the surface pretty well. Um, but I keep folding up the, the paper and getting clean spots to make sure I'm not contaminating anything. And then I'll take some 91% isopropyl alcohol and I'll wipe that down several times. Um, doing the same with the paper towel, folding it, getting new spots, getting an, another clean little chunk and making sure everything is good and wiped down as much as possible. And then one other step I take to make sure I don't get more pits in the clear layer is I will seal it uh, with a sealer. This time I'm using that UV resistant spray from Krylon. Uh, a lot of times I like to use uh, polyurethane spray as well. Both work just the same. Um, it was raining outside so when I did my second coat I was in the garage here but definitely give it a second coat just to make sure. And then I went to my Cricut machine here and I wanted to make some dots for the uh, 12, 3, 6, and 9 spots on the clock. So I just set it up to cut out the little circles and uh, get it going. So it's going to do its little thing here. It was pretty quick. There's only four little circles. I only made them about a quarter inch um, wide for all of them. And I'm just going to have the machine spit it out and take it over so I can um, cut it out. And that way I can use the rest of that um, aluminum foil, aluminum foil, sorry, adhesive foil uh, later. Take off the excess here. Oh, one of them got stuck, which is fine. Just kind of quickly pull that off, stick that back on the backing there. And then um, I have a jelly roll pen and um, I'm just using this to mark where my dots are going to be. And I'm pretty sure that there is a much better way to do this, but I basically just take a ruler, figure out where I want my uh, 12, the top and the bottom to be, um, and then through the center of the hole, mark my spots. And I did about 15 millimeters from the edge. And then I just took this um, L square, really not sure what it's called, but I just took that to make sure I got my 90 degree down and, um, marked my other ones and then made sure that that was in a good straight line 
and then just took some tweezers and uh, bent the backing there to get those little dots off and then placed them right over those white marks that I made. And then I used the backing to rub down the spots and make sure that there was no air underneath there. And then I just grabbed some, uh, some more alcohol and uh, just used a little bit of it to wipe off my fingerprints from the silver because you would definitely see them. And then I've just got the Pro Marine tabletop epoxy again here for my clear coat and just mixing up about three ounces. Don't need much for this and just pour it on, spread it out, hit it with the torch a little bit, pop all those bubbles. And then what I'm gonna use to cover this one um, is a food tent. And I really like this um, if I don't wanna move it over to uh, my drying rack that I have. Um, just opens up kind of like an umbrella. Uh, sometimes it gets stuck to the paper because I put it in some resin, but I'm not worried about ruining the lace part of this. Um, but I just cut off the excess resin, uh, pop that little wire back in that I pulled out from that, and then it collapse it down. It stores pretty easy. And this clear coat doesn't have any pits in it from silicone not getting covered. I just need to take up or take off the drips. So how I'm gonna do that with this one, um, I found that sanding them down, I don't really like it because I end up with a lot of scratches on the front just from the, the, the dust that comes off from sanding gets underneath there no matter what you do. Um, so I'm just gonna use one of these accessories that comes with the heat gun. It's kind of like a little shovel. And as the, um, as the heat heats up the resin, it softens it. So then you can just go along and basically scrape off the drips really easily. And they do kind of go flying, so expect that and maybe make a barrier. Um, I kind of wish I had because I had to sweep the floor on the other side of the table too. Um, but you can see that it just, like a shovel, it's just going underneath them and scraping them up. So it does really, really well. So I'm just going to finish that up here real quick. And then I'm just going to get everything cleaned up. Wipe it down with uh, one of the blue paper towels and just sanding everything. Make sure everything's kind of smooth. And this is just a nail file. It's a typical emery board. You can find them anywhere. Walmart, King Super, or King Supers. Yeah, any grocery stores. Um, and you just want to hold it kind of at a, a light angle so you don't scratch the side or anything and just follow along with your finger and you can feel those sharp edges and uh, easily sand everything down to make it so it doesn't cut you or, any, or your clients or anything. Um, I also wanted to make sure that the clock movement fit through the hole, which it did. So uh, then I grabbed some acrylic uh, black paint here so that way I can clean up the back and just make it look all nice and tidy. And with this, I laid, it, um, I laid it on pretty thick, so that way I didn't have to do a second coat. And I just did the strokes out from the center to give it an extra little texture on the back. And then just quickly dried it with a hairdryer. Save some time. And then I grabbed my um, wax stamp that I have. Uh, basically, it's how I brand um, all my art and then um, I'll also sign everything as well. But I really like having a, a custom logo wax stamp. I love using a wax stamp. And these little uh, different color chunks, um, I just picked out some that match the front. It's really nice having a bunch that I can choose from. And then I just stick it in the spoon. I made sure I knew where up was on the, on the clock, so that way I'd at least um, <laughs> have the stamp in the right direction. Um, but I got it mixed up here, and it's kind of like a little uh, dirty pour. Just stick the stamp in there, and then uh, clean off my spoon, let it cool, and it's done. And I absolutely love it. It's kind of like a little marbled look that it gives, um, having the different colors in there. So there's this rubber washer. Um, first, I'm gonna put on the little hanger um, and then the washer, and then make sure that the hanger is pointing up towards the 12. 
And then I'm going to stick on the metal washer after I drop it. And then the little nut and um, use some pliers to tighten it up. But you want to make sure that when you're doing this, you're, you're doing it kind of slowly. So that way you don't slip off and accidentally scratch the resin. Now, these are the hands I'm going to use. And you want to make sure um, if it doesn't come together with the movement you want to make sure that the shapes of the holes are the same as the movement these are round and it's um, really the minute hand you're going to want to pay attention to this top one here um, because some of them will come in more of a rectangular shape and it won't work with the round ones um, they are kind of flimsy so my second hand got a little uh, bent in the process here and i just cleaned that up stuck a battery in it and made sure that everything was working properly and it's all done. So I really liked how this one turned out. The difference with the powders and the pastes, um, the powders sink. So it actually gives it a lot more depth and, and even more than you can really see in the video and the pictures. Um, the sparkle of that blue is amazing too. I absolutely love it. The effects that the white has um, by adding the silicone in there, I really love what it did. And... Um, yeah, so I'm definitely happy with this one. What do you guys think? Let me know uh, down in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions too. And don't forget to hit uh, the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, product links are below. Again, the powders were samples that Laura had, so they don't have names. I don't have links for them. Um, and then also check out the links in the description for... Um, what I like to use when I create all the products and everything. And um, there's also links to support my art and my channel, like Patreon and PayPal um, and my Amazon wish list. But uh, yeah, definitely thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.